Hey everybody, it's Chris. Today we're going to work on a burst template for a tumbler. And I stumbled on this particular type of tumbler making a few weeks ago. And I found this really cute pattern. I actually, I, I'm kind of sort of obsessed with it and I've found a lot of patterns actually. The first three that I purchased was um, the Coffee to Go pattern, which is what we're gonna work on today. Um, I've also made the Fleur de Lis pattern as well. This is my own personal tumbler and it says life is beautiful. Um, I'm kind of a big geek about French things and most definitely about Fleur de Lis. Um, so I posted this on the Facebook group for Ellie's Crafty Company and she commented that she'd never thought of pink for it. And that was right where my head went was pink and Fleur de Lis and French. But um, I also did a little strip on the same tacky sheet that I cut out. And I did that one in purple, green, and gold for Mardi Gras. So I don't have this one done yet, but I just wanna say that the possibilities are endless with these tack sheets. I mean, you can go any direction that you want to um, with these patterns and do any color that you would like. So um, I will put the link to um, Ellie's website down in the description of my video. Um, these are the Tumblr tack sheets. These are from CCDIY, um, which is another company that I'm a huge fan of. You get seven sheets and they're 11 by 14, so they're very large. Um, as you can see, this is about nine inches, I believe, so you still have a nice big piece down here. And what I do with that is I just cut out another pattern, and then that is actually how I ended up with the strip on this cup was, it was just the extra part down at the bottom of the tack sheet. So it's kind of cool that you can get one tumbler and you can also get um, another piece down below it. So these are $12.95 for seven sheets. Um, there are other products on the market. I've heard people talk about Cat Scratch. Um, I didn't have a lot of success trying to figure out where that was at on the internet. So um, I just went to CCDIY and I saw that they had these and I was like, oh, sold. That's exactly what I'm going to use. Now, how I cut these, it says to use the washi tape setting. I have a Cricut. So um, the Cricut has the washi tape setting and it said to use more pressure. I had just put a brand new blade in my Cricut, so more pressure was not a good thing. It cut all the way through. Um, what it is, is it has the white sheet on the front. Let me use this one. So it has the white sheet. That's where your cutting is going to happen on your Cricut. And then there's also a blue backer sheet. And then in between is the adhesive or kind of like the glue sheet. And so it ended up cutting like all the way through the glue and um, which kind of made it difficult to put it onto the tumbler because once it cuts through the glue, it doesn't really want to stay in one sheet. So it made it kind of tough to put on there. So my next one that I did, I used the washi tape setting and then I used the um, default setting. That still was a little too much. So now I've decided that the washi tape with um, less pressure is the best one for me. And I would just say, you know, do a couple of cuts and see if you're having issues with it cutting all the way through, then take some of the pressure off. And I apologize, I don't know very much about Silhouette. So I can't really give you any um, details about that. I would say the hardest thing about these tumbler sheets is deciding what colors you're going to use um, because they're just so much fun and she's got a lot of detail in them. They have a lot of outlines. Um, I've also done her camper one, which is absolutely adorable. Don't look at this because my seam didn't work out so great there, but so I think that's probably the hardest thing to figure out is what colors you want to use. But you do want to try to figure out what you're using before you start because you want to start with the darkest color and then work your way up to the lightest color. So we are going to do the coffee burst template, and, um, but you can see all of the different details that she has in these patterns. It's just amazing. So it kind of really makes the whole project pop. So as I said, the hardest part is figuring out what are you going to do with everything. So I am a huge caribou fan. So I decided I'm doing caribou. So I have all my glitters laid out here. You can see there's um, quite a few glitters, which is kind of like the fun part because um, you can buy all the glitters. You can never have too many glitters, people. 
the first thing that I did was pick out all my colors. I decided that I was going to outline um, or do the details on the lid in obsidian, which is a black. French press will be the lid because the caribou lids are um, brown. I will do the center of the label as well as the cup in um, socole, and that's a Mr. Nola's glitter. And um, for my iced coffees, I decided that Sunfire would be the coffee color in the cup. And then their straws are actually clear and I just don't think that's gonna work for me. So why not make them pink unicorn? I feel that that's like the perfect color. Um, I also have diamonds, which is a really pretty white, has lots of color flash in it. Um, I think that that is going to be the whipped cream. And I think I may use pink unicorn for the detail on the whipped cream. And then we are going to use um, West Bank Junior is kind of a, it says it's a white pearl ultra fine. And I'm thinking that that may be the color of the lid for the iced coffee. And then the background is going to be this vintage color. Um, and I'm probably just kind of gonna go, um, not exactly sure what my outlines will be on the coffee cups themselves. I will probably, um, We'll probably bring this French press back in before I do the vintage is kind of what I'm thinking. So this very outer layer is probably going to be this French press. And then I also have another glitter here. It was a free glitter from Mr. Nola's. I'm not sure what it is, but it's really pretty. Um, so it's probably going to be one of the outlines as well because I figured that it's just kind of, it looks kind of like an off white. And so I figured it would go really nice with all of these colors. So these are the colors we're going to do. So let me set these up here out of the way. Um, so I obviously want to do my black and my French press are going to be one of the first colors that I do because those are the darkest colors that I'm using. Um, there's not a lot of tools that are needed for this. Once it's cut out, I do have this blush brush that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and it has been wonderful to um, brush the glitter off after I'm done with the tumbler. And it's also great to get it off of my silicone mat that I have from Counterculture. Um, I also have a little glitter vacuum that has come in handy. The um, glitter vacuum doesn't work so great on the silicone, but it does work well on the paper and other areas. So I'm just gonna use a file folder to kind of work on because once I have it did you notice that I picked a color that would go with my whole color scheme? Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set my sheet here and then I can dump off any extra glitter and put it back in the bottle. And honestly, about the only color that I do that with is probably the first color that I start with because once you get going, you're going to get some other colors in there. And it's not, um, I don't wanna contaminate my other colors with, you know, I don't wanna put black glitter in with my white or in with um, some of the other colors. So once I get going, I don't necessarily go back to um, put any other color in. Um, you'll need a weeding pen. Um, this is also from Counterculture DIY. Um, it's a really nice pen. You can click it shut. It's just got like a little needle end on it. Um, so I have that one. I also have an X-Acto knife, just in case my Cricut missed something. Um, the first one I did, I. I did something and it didn't quite cut all the way through, so I just had to trim it a little bit. Other than that, not a lot of tools that you need for this. So, all right, so we are going to start with, and I kind of have to like sit here and look at this and decide um, what everything is going to be and get in my head, and then I can start pulling things off to know what I'm doing. So we're gonna start with the obsidian. So I had said that we're going to use the obsidian to do the detail in the coffee lid in the hot coffee lid. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. Now once you start pulling, um, once you start to pull off some of the lines, it becomes easier because then you can start to see like what, what you're doing and it kind of all starts to make sense. So the whole outline will be that obsidian, which is gonna work perfectly on this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to another hot coffee cup and I just flip that out of my way if it's in my way. Um, so I'm just going to continue to pull off all of my vinyl. Now when you pull this and you use your, it's easier when you don't have a lot of people watching you, um, when you use your little um, tool, you just want to make sure that you are only picking off 
the paper. Um, that was another thing that I did too when I first started is I thought, oh, I need to dig down deep to get that off, and you don't. You just have to like very lightly pull that white layer off. Now the reason this is blue is because of the blue backer sheet. So don't worry as you get going. I was kind of freaked out with my Fleur de Lis tumbler because I was using a pink glitter, but when I was doing it, it looked purple and I was like, oh my goodness, what did I do? But it was just because of the blue backing. So we're gonna see as we're going through this that as we do some of those whites, it's gonna show through as blue, but never fear, it will be beautiful when it gets onto the cup. So with all of these little templates, I have put them onto a white painted tumbler. Um, the one that I'm working with today is a 20 ounce hog and it is a tapered tumbler. So it kind of comes in on the sides. Um, and Yanelli has patterns on her website for the tapered tumblers as well as the straight or skinny tumblers. Those have the straight sides on them. And um, I always measure to make sure that my measurements are correct for the cup that I'm using. So don't, um, you know, there are some suggestions on there for you, but don't rely solely on that. Make sure that you're measuring every tumbler that you use because it makes a difference um, what company you have purchased it from. Um, it makes a difference if there's any epoxy on it before you start. All of those things can add thickness to the tumbler and make it a larger size than just a plain tumbler without anything done to it. So just make sure that you're measuring. All right, I'm gonna continue to pull all of the um, paper off of the hot cups and then we'll pop back and I'll, um, we'll start with the glitter. Okay, so I pulled all of the tape off of the hot coffee cups. As I was doing that, I decided that I also wanted the cold coffee cups to be um, or iced coffee cups to be outlined in the black as well. So I started to pull, um, I started to pull that off as well. So let me just pull this last one. Um, the other thing too, another little tip is sometimes you have to look at the edges, the top, the bottom, the sides, and kind of try to decipher like what parts those are because sometimes it's kind of difficult to tell um, because it is, um, it is a seamless template, meaning that um, when this is joined together, there shouldn't be a seam. So we should have complete coffee cups all the way around. So I've got this little piece down here and I had this coffee cup and then I've got something here. On this side, I have an iced coffee. So I'm not exactly sure. I think this is part of the outline and then this I think is just the background. So I didn't pull anything off of that. Otherwise, I think we're good to go to start doing the black. Um, the other thing too that I have found as I've been doing these is that sometimes um, I'll be going along and I go to glitter apart and realize that I didn't pull something off. And so I may have to go back and just um, pull that and do the same color of glitter that was already there. So um, don't worry if you missed a piece, you can always go back and fix it. <clears throat> so I'm using CC DIY um, glitter is obsidian and I put mine in little shaker spice bottles. These are three and a half ounce bottles that I buy off of um, Amazon. And then I'll take a picture of my glitter um, storage system and kind of show you what it looks like. But um, Counterculture's glitter comes in bags like this. Um, so I always put it into a shaker bottle. I just found that that's easier for the things that I use it for. And then some companies like um, Glitter Heart Company, you can buy theirs with a shaker bottle or you can buy it with a bag. And then um, some of them that I wanted that were sold out, I just bought the bag and then I bought extra bottles. So I open up my little shaker end and what I try to do is kind of just shake it out onto where the lines are. And it will surprise you um, how much glitter it takes to cover this because you'll think that you have quite a bit on there and then you go to rub it in and it's like, oh, I guess I didn't quite have as much as I thought. But you can also move the glitter around to other areas too. But I just like to use this and shake it on. And then um, once I have it shook on, then I'm gonna go back and I'll just kind of burnish it into the adhesive that's there. This adhesive is really sticky. Um, I was kind of worried with, you know, how many different steps there are and all of the different glitters that the glitter that I put on in the beginning wouldn't be left when it was, you know, finished with it, but it actually, um, they actually do really well and your glitters will still be in place. 
So I just had a moment there when I saw the straw and I was like, oh no, but I want the outline to be black. So I think, um, I think black is a good choice because I feel like black really kind of makes a lot of different things pop. And um, when I used to do stamping, um, even with my painting, anything that I've done, I just really feel like the black makes everything pop and really stand out nicely. So I'm just like shaking this over where I can see the blue. And like I said, this is the first color, so we can dump this back in the bottle. And I know it seems like I've dumped a lot on here, but um, it is crazy. It really doesn't take a lot of glitter. I mean, here's my glitter bottle and it still doesn't have I don't know if we can tell. There's still a ton in there, so, and I will be able to put some of this back in. So I just take my finger and I kind of hold and then I just burnish it into those little areas. And this is the fun part. I kind of think that of this as like coloring for adults, um, but you're using glitter. And how does it get any better than using glitter to color with, right? Um, but that's what it kind of reminds me of is just coloring coloring books and just filling in and going along from one color to the next. So once the black is done, then we're going to move on to our next darker color, which is the French press. And that is going to be the hot coffee lid. Um, and I think that's all we're using French press for at this point anyway. Um, I guess we did talk about using that as one of the outlines too. So we'll do the lids and as I start pulling off the lines, then it'll kind of come to me. That's the other thing too, guys. If you like, if you get started, like don't get overwhelmed with this. Um, I, the first one I did, I was like, oh my gosh, what if I do it wrong? It's okay if you, if you don't do it the way you thought it should have been done. Um, there's nothing wrong with something being a different color. Um, I'm just gonna rub right here and make sure that I do have that rubbed in because I kind of try to find the areas where it's not like, um, where I feel like it hasn't been rubbed in yet. And then I'm gonna take my little blush brush and look at how that comes off. So this will not take off all of it. Um, it takes off the majority. I feel like the sheets kind of get a little staticky as you work with them but this will take off the majority of the black and I'm just gonna put this back um, onto the file folder just to get the majority of it off. But look at how now you, you can kind of start to see like what you're doing, which I always think the first color is always fun to see. You can kind of start to see your map then. Okay, so there's that. All right, so now I've got the glitter off of my paper. And as I said before, I don't, the first color is the only color that I'm gonna put back in the bottle. So the rest of them will just go right into the trash. I'm just gonna use my little weeding tool and we're gonna pull all of the pieces that will be brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and then we'll pop back and you can see me add the glitter to that color. Okay, while you were away, I decided um, the background should also be the French press and I also decided that I'm going to use the Vintage for the first outline and then put a cork in it is another brand of glitter. Um, that'll be the outside rim. So I think the French press will look really nice as the background. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on here. I've taken all of my hot coffee lid pieces off. Um, and then remember when I told you that as you're going, you're probably gonna find some pieces that you missed and I certainly did. Over here, I missed this black. So um, I've got a little bit of black on the tacky sheet. Sometimes I can take my fingernail or um, my little um, weeding tool and kind of get some of that out of there. But um, I it should just be fine and it'll just blend in. There's already a little bit of black on um, some of the pieces anyway. That black seems to be kind of armory tonight. It wants to just stick around and then come off on everything else tonight. So. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my French press on here. As I said, I just use my little shaker bottle. I feel like if I use the shaker bottle, it kind of helps me to conserve my glitter too. Because remember when I said that I'm not going to reuse this glitter, it will just get dumped. So I'm gonna start up here. And the other thing that I find really interesting as I'm doing these is 
like how soft some of the glitters are. Like this one is super soft. So as you're like rubbing it into the sheet, you can feel that, I don't know if it's got more polyester in it maybe, um, but some of the glitters are just really soft and um, it's kind of interesting to feel the different textures. Um, so I'm just kind of moving this around and kind of pushing this over here on this one lid. I know I didn't have a lot of glitter on it as well as down here and you can kind of see the blue through it. So I'm just gonna pull some of this other glitter from the other areas and fill that in rather than pull any more glitter out of my bottle. Because you can see that I have some extra here. So I'm just gonna kind of work it around and push it down to the spaces where I need it. And then that way I'm not wasting a whole lot of glitter. I will say that is another thing with these templates that will, um, <laughs> It has kind of been a very fun thing, but um, you just can't have enough glitter colors, guys. So it's been fun to find the different glitters and um, you know, kind of decide what to use. So very fortunate that I'm able to have a lot to choose from. Okay, so I've got all of that rubbed in. Again, if you pick it up and you can see quite a bit of blue through it, maybe go back over and try to rub just a little bit more in because that's that backing sheet. And honestly, even if it looks like that on here, by the time we get it on the cup, you won't be able to tell it at all. But if you don't have, like let's say that I didn't have this lighter kind of gold brown color, I could totally take the French press and possibly add in gold or I could add in like this West Bank and that would lighten that up. So if you don't have the color that you think you need, don't, um, don't hesitate to mix up your own color. Um, just do it a little bit at a time so that you don't waste a bunch of glitter and then realize, ooh, that doesn't look good at all. Um, that's kind of what I did on um, the Fleur de Lis tumbler. If you can see right here, that's a mixture of all the glitters that I used for the background. So I just mixed up my own little custom mix for it and it worked out really well. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and knock off some of this extra glitter again. All right, so the next color that we're going to do, I missed a little bit of brown right there. Um, the next color that we're going to do is, I think the Sunfire, excuse me, Sunfire for the um, iced coffee one will be the next darkest one. So um, I think that's the next best progression. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna pull on these guys. We are going to pull, I'm going to pull this too, I think, because I feel like your coffee would kind of go up under the lid and then you would have the cream or the um, whipped cream, right? Now I'm sitting here thinking maybe I shouldn't have done that, but it's too late now. Just need to commit to it. Just have to commit to it, that's all. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull all these pieces off for the iced coffee, and then I'll pop you back for the glitter. Okay, I've got all the pieces uncovered for the iced coffees, um, and I can see over here where I missed one of the hot lids, um, as well as right here. So you're gonna find those mistakes, like as you start to pull off the pieces, um, as you go along, you'll start to find pieces that you totally missed. So it's all right, you just go back and fix it. Um, okay, so this is the Sunfire, and it's kind of a goldish brown. So we're just gonna sprinkle this little guy on. Um, this is a chunkier glitter than the other ones that we have used. Um, I kind of like to mix the chunky and then the super fine glitters. I think it's kind of fun to have a little bit of extra texture to it. This is really gonna be pretty. I think it's actually going to be like kind of fancy with all the golds and stuff in it. And I absolutely love aqua colors anyway. So aquas and teals, they're my favorites. Um, and I will say that this is not, um, you can probably already tell, this is not a fast cup to make. Um, these take a little bit of time, but I think they're so worth it. And I find it like super relaxing. I mean, it could totally take me probably two hours to glitter some of these. Um, especially the, the camper, that was the first one I had ever done. That one took me even longer just because I'd not done one before and I really had to stop and think about like what I was doing and which 
you know, which tapes I was um, pulling off and were those the correct ones. Um, but it all worked out in the end. Ooh, look at that, guys. Can you see that sparkle? Let me see if I can get it a little closer for you. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so I think we are ready to move on to the turquoise. So the turquoise is going on the hot cup itself, as well as the little labels. So I'm gonna start pulling all of that off. I think this color is the one that's really gonna make it pop. All right, I'm gonna pull these and we'll be right back. Okay, I've got everything pulled for the turquoise. Just gonna brush some of this extra off and then I'll start to sprinkle that on. Oh yeah. Now she's really saying caribou. And I don't, I don't know, there's just something about like their little sayings that they have on their cups are cute and on the little cup sleeve, or the, yeah, the little cup sleeves. Um, they just have really cute sayings on them. It's just kind of crack me up. So, oh, I missed one of the little labels right here. But that turquoise looks really pretty on with those other colors that we have so far. Okay, so this is a chunkier one. Um, it's still nice and soft though, but I'm just gonna kind of make sure that I get that really in there so that she sticks. Such a pretty color though. So pretty. Turquoise is one of the colors that I just have a love for anyway, but I actually, I like a lot of colors. Um, pink is usually my favorite favorite. And then I love like purples and plums, mulberry colors, all of the things. But I have to say that as I started to buy more glitter, it's like, you know, for example, this vintage, it's like, how beautiful is that? And you know, it's not a vi uh, bright, vibrant color like I'm used to, but it's just such a pretty color. Sometimes I forget where I'm at, so I just kind of go over and make sure that I do have everything rubbed in because I don't want to miss anything. Okay, so she is coming together quite nicely. All right, so here we are so far, and I apologize because I think I'm looking at my screen up there and it looks like it's kind of weird looking on the screen. I apologize. I will get a really good photo for you when it's all finished, but she's coming together nicely. Let me get rid of this glitter. Yeah, let's do the pink next because even if we get a little bit of gold in that, it's not the end of the world. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off my little whipped cream swirls and then also the straws. Okay, we're ready to add the pink unicorn glitter on. This is also from Counterculture. And I don't think it's going to be like a heavy pink. I think it's just going to be kind of a little shimmer is what I'm thinking. So we're going to put that onto our whipped cream swirlies and our straw. Okay, again, this is a really pale glitter. So you can see it's showing blue, but we're not worried about that because that's just our background. And we know that that's not how it's going to look once it's on the cup. So I can see a little bit of shift in there and I can see a little bit of pink, but... I don't think we're gonna see a lot of the pink until it's on the cup. All right, so we are going to do our next one. I think we're going to do the vintage and I want each cup to be outlined in the vintage. So this should go a little bit faster because these are big outline pieces and on the full cups, they'll pull right off. All right, now we're gonna put on the vintage. This is a Glitter Heart Company glitter which we've used several of those already. Um, the other thing I wanted to say too is that, um, you know, with all supplies in our art, we get what we pay for. Um, so I would suggest that you don't buy the Walmart glitters, the Michaels glitters, um, you know, try to find a really good company to purchase from. Glitter Heart Company is a great company to purchase from. Their glitters are beautiful. Um, sometimes she'll have sales going on. 
but um, she's probably one of the least expensive glitters I buy. Um, Counterculture has beautiful glitters, as well as Mr. Nola's glitter, but you'll see as you go to different companies, there's definitely a different price range on their glitters, but just keep in mind that, um, you know, if it's a higher uh, price glitter, it's probably for a reason, and that there really is a difference in, you know, what you purchase, so. I guess the moral of the story is, you know, purchase the glitter that you can afford because you'll probably be happier with it than if you purchase something that's much cheaper. Um, and, you know, in the beginning, I started with the Michaels glitters and, you know, I didn't know any better either. So just kind of want to give you a little education on that as well, that it definitely makes a difference what you purchase. Um, the Glitter Guy is another one that's a really good one to um, to buy from. Um, and honestly, it's like I, I buy from a lot of different companies because not one company is going to have everything that I want. All right, so we're going to go ahead and rub this in. All right, so I think we are going to use Put a Cork in it. And you can see that this is kind of green, but it's because of that blue outline. So... Um, yeah, I think we're gonna do put a cork in it. So I'm gonna pull the next outline of my cups off and I'll be right back. All right, we're ready to do the gold. I don't have this one in a shaker. This was something I picked up at a show that I went to last year. So we're just gonna gently shake this on. It's a very pretty gold too. It's kind of a soft gold. And then the last thing that we have to do are the labels and then the whipped cream. Trying to be careful not to, I don't want to waste this glitter, but. Trying to be careful and hopefully I can get everything glittered with what I have on here. If not, I'll have to go back in and add a little more. Just kind of trying to push it around. And here is the finished sheet. Sorry, I know it looks really weird on the camera. Um, it looks really chunky, but it's not that chunky. Okay, so I've got all of the pieces done. Now I'm gonna set this over to the side and clean up my space here real quick, and then we'll put it on the tumbler. Okay, we're ready to put this on the tumbler. Um, I did measure my tumbler when I started, and I thought I had the right measurements, but by the time I don't know, I, I didn't get something quite right. I probably should have gotten just a smidge bigger. Um, it's hard with the taper because, you know, you've got a different measurement at the top than you do the bottom. And these templates are already set to one size. So if you change it, it's not like I can change the bottom to be wider than the top is. So um, it was just a matter of kind of making sure that it fit as well as possible. So I already know that I'm gonna have a spot where I won't have any of the pattern. Um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and cut all of the white off of the edges. So let me go ahead and trim this too. I was kind of hoping this would be enough to cover my glitter, but that's all right. This is not my first rodeo, and this is not the first time I've been short. So it's kind of cool, it's like fabric. And then this is the back side of it. So what I'm going to do is kind of lay it on my tumbler and get an idea of where I want it. Um, I like to have the bottom of it to be glittered. Um, so I'm gonna kind of leave it a little bit towards the top. I like to have this blank because then I can get a nice coat of epoxy right up to the edge and have it sealed nicely, which is what I've done on all of my other ones. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of leave the top of it with a nice rim. And then the bottom, um, I'll go ahead and put glitter on that. So I'm just gonna make sure that I've got the top where I want it. Um, now, what I will tell you is you to who need to be careful. Um, remember how I said that sometimes my cutter will go all the way through the glue as well. So I'm very gentle when I start this part. So what I'm going to do is I'm just trying to get this blue paper off of the back of it, just so that I can get it started. And once I get it loose, then I should be able to work my way down to the other side of it. And if I can't get it off on this one end, then I'll go to the other end and try it. And let's see, there it is. I have some little baby tweezers that sometimes are kind of nice to use. 
So I'm going to gently pull this back. As I said, it's very easy to rip these. Even as you're putting them on the tumbler, you don't want to pull and stretch because you will pull them apart right at the pattern because you have to remember that was, you know, it cut through the paper and probably a little bit into the glue as you were cutting it on your machine. Um, so I try to be really careful when I'm getting these ready to go on my cup. And I apologize because you probably can't see much at all right now. All right, so what I do, what I like to do is I like to get the edge of it exposed and it tore just a little bit right there, but that's okay. I try to get the, the sheet to be laying down on my table and I pull the paper back to expose my pattern. And I'm just gonna fold this paper over like so and crease it a little bit so it stays where I want it to. And then I had my tumbler, well, I did have my tumbler laying out right. I just felt it slide. <laughs> I felt it slide a little bit. So I think that's pretty close to where it should be. That's the kind of the problem with this is it's, things are sticky and I just pulled my pattern up. I just took a piece off. So that's okay. That's why you don't want to touch this part of it with your finger because it doesn't, once you get a hold of it, it's very hard to get it off your fingers. And there's ways that you can fix it, but just like that. Okay, so I didn't have my paper folded back well. I'm just gonna place this back where it needs to be. You can see I've got a couple pieces missing, but I've got that over here on the side. And I'm just gonna place this here and try to eyeball about where I want it. And then I'm gonna come over and grab it, and now I've got it attached to my cup. And then we're gonna hope for the best. I'm gonna hope that I can get this where I need it to be. So I'm just gonna gently kind of work it around here and try to get it lined up so that when I start pulling, it's where it needs to be. And I really need it to be this way a little bit more. But I kind of have a feeling I'm not gonna be able to get it off without messing it up. So I did not eyeball that the best, but that's okay. I'm, I already have an idea of how I can fix it. Okay, so now I've got it attached to my cup. I'm just gonna gently pull this back to expose it. And I'm going to fold it again just to keep it out of my way. Try not to touch it. This is not quite as gracefully as I had hoped it would go off for you, but. I'd really like it to come down a little bit more, but I don't think it's going to. So I'm just gently rubbing it um, onto the cup. And then just pulling back my paper as I go. I just continue to roll and pull the paper back. And you can see I'm already up here at the top, which is not a good thing. But if I try to pull this down, then I'm gonna end up with a bubble down at the bottom or it's going to pull my pattern apart and I don't want that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue putting this on and then I will deal with what I have when I'm done here. But there's always ways to fix things. It's not ideal because it was such a beautiful pattern. I hate that it didn't um, match up right, but. All right, so I'm going to, my top is already starting to pull apart with the pattern. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this and try to get this off so that it will lay where it needs to. Go ahead and keep pulling and wrapping. 
Okay, so it is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Not nearly as perfect as I had hoped since I was taping it for you. So you can see that I'm really off here. So probably what I will end up doing, um, obviously I did not meet in the middle, but this seems like a perfect word, a place to put a word. So I'll probably just put a word there after I get it um, epoxied. And then I will fix the top of it. I'll just cut some of that away and then we'll just trim this up so that it's all even and no one will ever know that it's a problem. So you can see um, now that it's on the cup, you can see that pink unicorn, the really pretty pearl white that we put on there. Um, I tried to make sure that my mat was super clean when I started, but um, you can see all the shimmer and all the beautiful places. You can see the gold. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and get this fixed up and put it, a coat of epoxy on it and then um, I will come back and probably put a word there. And then this is probably going to get glittered in the turquoise color, because I just love that turquoise. Um, we could also glitter it in one of the golds too, that would be really pretty, but I'm just gonna see if I can't get this straightened out um, so that it is um, presentable. It's probably gonna be my tumbler anyway, so I don't care if it's absolutely perfect. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get that done and then I will show you pictures at the end of the video so you can see what it looks like. And by the way, we are two hours and 11 minutes into this video. So that tells you kind of how long these guys can take, but they're totally worth it. And obviously I was talking a lot while I was doing it and kind of stopped to explain things to you. So, you know, the next one won't take as long because you'll know all the right pieces to pull off. So, all right, all right, guys, I'm going to put, um, I will put the links to Ellie's Crafty Company down in the description of my video. Um, I will put the link to Counterculture DIY um, for the epoxy, for some of the glitters that I used, as well as the tack sheets. Um, and you can use coupon code CHRIS to get $5 off of your order. Um, and then if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to try to help you. And I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you make one for yourself. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.